welcome to jars to table i have been out um and i've gotten a ton of meat i was going to go to my local butcher i had every intention of doing that because i'd much prefer it but um i know i can get a lot of meat from aldi's at the moment and i'm running seriously low so i'm going to clean the heck out of it get as much of the water out of the product because they always put water in it i want to get rid of that um and uh, and then i'm going to can it uh also uh, can my bacon as well and show you how to do that getting my gammon i'm going to break that down and can that as well um and, and just little tips here there and everywhere okay uh first off always always clean it with some vinegar just plop uh, a cup you know like a, a just a, a cup load of vinegar in with very clean water i never use tap water by the way wouldn't dream of it um, the other thing is i always buy because i because everything's canned uh crispy chicken often doesn't happen <laughs> unless it's in my freezer but i only put chicken in the freezer where um i know that it's it can be canned super quickly or eaten that week just in case that i have no electricity and my free my freezer goes down because my freezer and my fridge are holding places for other preservation methods you know a lot of people have put a lot of stuff in their freezer but if that freezer go down they just lose the whole lot because they haven't learned how to preserve it so for me the only thing i allow in the freezer is chickens with bones and skin on um i can take the bones out but my boys just like a little bit of uh of crispy chicken skin so the fact is i know that if my freezer goes down the only food i've got in here is this particular thing and um i can easily just open it up take the bones out and i can can it straight away but anyway these are going to soak in some vinegar water i've already added a little bit in but i'm gonna add a teeny bit more i only soak it in water from my filter system i don't use uh real sort of well not real but tap water ever right so that's two of them gone um i've already last night because i couldn't help myself fried all my mince beef up i always i always fry it up and then i just put it straight in the jars top it up to the neck with water um add a bit of salt because i like it and then that's done so i've done a load of those already stewing beef got a load of stewing beef um and this is where i would add some um sort of a light chicken or beef uh light chicken or beef uh stock now why do i add chicken sometimes because it makes beef sweet now usually with both of these i um, put celery um, and onions in the bottom for both of these but it's not onion season at the moment and unfortunately i have run dry of onions i'm really annoyed but there's nothing good out there at the moment and but they're just about to come out so I, i'm i'm waiting right okay so it's getting on now we'll do the gammon first now if you like gammon and peas gammon and lentil soup whatever then absolutely 100 percent put it in with it but i want to have a little bit of um I want a little bit of room for flexibility. I'm going to put this to salted water and let this soak for a bit. 
take the sleeve off. Almost forgot to take the sleeve off. And let it soak in some salted water because I want to get out as much water that they've pumped in. Oh. So that gets covered again with my um, pre-filtered water. Vinegar and where's my salt where's my salt uh, oops now it does shrink up a bit you will get um some shrinkage in your meats when you do this you don't need to put a lot in but a teaspoon or two but I do want to get rid of whatever they've stuck in there as much as I possibly can. So that's going to both, I'm going to do both of these and that's going to soak for probably an hour. Okay, now the mammoth amount of chicken breasts. That's all next. And again, I'm adding Two teaspoons of probably yeah, two heaped teaspoons of salt and a large dash of vinegar. And we are gonna stick these in next. If I can find my scissors. Um now a word about the chick the water. So what I found is, have you ever left something in to soak overnight? Well, I, I noticed that um, every time I've done that with uh, tap water, and I leave it overnight, and I come back and the slime, the water's slimy, where if I've done it, because I have done an experiment, and this is local water, okay, so this is gone, th this is tap water from, that's come from Waterworks, uh, cleaning places, whatever you call them. And um, anyway, so I've done it with my filtered under, under, water, under sink filter system. It doesn't do it. So whatever's in the water is um turns to slime if left standing with protein yuck and it's just started to happen i've noticed it in the last uh, well six months the well yeah yeah six to eight months i've noticed the water has changed and it reacts to protein differently so uh i i you know i've really got to get a full water filter system for the shower as well but yeah that's all I'm going to say on that front all going to be canned today now it's really good to if you need any trays so anyway I'm going to leave this here for now so that's that's going to be soaking that I've got to find something oh yeah I've got to find something else to soak this in and then we'll go straight on to the bacon which is really good now a top tip is I always keep as many of these that I actually need uh, as possible for sort of a plant plant sill surfing but also I have lights, um, uh, grow lights, and this, this large size can fit a number of my smaller plant, plot, plant pots under my grow lights and it keeps it together. So transporting is an awful lot easier. So, um, or seed trays. So I do keep these. In my uh, fridge, I really only keep one load of butter. I store my butter in the freezer on the whole, and I'm about to turn 
a lot of it into ghee because if I'm not using butter I am using lard uh, for cooking with because uh, I'm trying to get away as much as possible from um, sorry brain's gone dead I haven't had my first coffee of the day that's how excited I am to can this lot up um, where was I? <laughs> So with the uh, lard and ghee, yeah, I'm, I can store that on my cupboard uh, shelf in jars and that can keep for a long, long time. Again, so I don't need to rely on the fridge or freezer. But there's a lot of fat that can be rendered down from a lot of our products and you just cook with it. Brilliant. So this is all now, I can move it and they're going to sit while we get on with our bacon. Move that to the side. Okay, I've got to wash my hands. The secret to the bacon is rolling it. I bought a ton of this stuff and you have to cut it up into strips that are long enough the length of your bacon okay because that's all you can eat it bit be a little bit longer but not that much so what you're aiming for is that side show you me canning it up when I've got enough because generally what I find is I don't can these in large cans because I'll I only want a number of rashers so for instance me with my two children I am not going to need a whole of this I'll only I'll so there's eight rashers I'll only can four at a time so I'm going to use um so i'm gonna get two cans for each jar so let me show you the size i look at for me okay so now i'm going to show how i put them in jars i think these are like 340 the hexagon shapes um but i prefer these although i could pack everything in here i wouldn't be able to do the last stage and these are like uh 300 milliliter so what I want to do is put it on its side. We're still having a bit of fun because we're going to, we want the air bubbles to come out quite easily. So to do that, I want the paper upright. And to do that, I've got to pack them quite tightly, not immensely tightly, don't go too wild, but um, I just want to try and fit it like that, okay? And you will have two left over. And these, I'm gonna put like a little teepee on the top so they stay upright. And you can fit probably a little bit more, but I'd rather not push it because I want the head space. I don't want it banging against the uh, lid. So I put it on a little teepee shape. And that way all the bubbles are able to come up and that's two jars done and we'll keep going until we do the rest right i am back if not a little bit skew if but <laughs> let's see anyway the bacon is now water pressure canning for 75 minutes the the i mean some if I, if they were larger jars and thicker bacon, I'd probably be tempted to do it for a bit longer. But to be honest, 75 minutes is 
good enough because it's really thin bacon and they're really small jars. Now when it comes to cutting this up, you've got to decide your can size. Let me just wash my hands. Okay, in our family, we're going to use this size for the amount of meat because I'll be mixing in a white sauce, adding it to pasta. I won't need more than this at all for three people. Um, so bearing that in mind, you have to take all your jars that you think you, you may use because we're going to distribute the um, fat evenly throughout. This is enough, this will be great for um, frying, rendering down if it needs it, frying and putting with some pasta and, and, and using it uh, because it will be quite oily. What I'd probably do is take this out, um, fry it all up, add a bit of chicken to it, not a lot, but a bit of chicken to it and, uh, and then once that's done throw it in some cooked pasta and top it with parmesan and it would be good to go so that's a different meal all on its own all of the cans uh, you know you know how to do it uh, i'm sure you'd all do they're all going to be washed now with some vinegar solution i'm topping up with um water so that whole uh, joint that we did um, for, these are about 450 milliliters. So, you know, what is that? Almost a pint, I think, if you convert it, not sure. And a little one, sort of, I don't know what that is, uh, 280. So now to do it all over again. Oh, uh, I'm not going to cover it all the way to the top. I am going to leave a little bit because these are going to have liquid uh, seep out of it. So if you can, woo, if you can see here, I have left space, but I have left water below it, below the meat line, because I know that this meat is going to. Um, let go off. Hey, hey. Right, so we're back. Um, I've vinegared the lids. I have done again. Um, this had less fat on it, but uh, anyway, I've, I've added the fat to the bottom. Finger tight lids. A lot more meat on that than was before and I thought gosh I might need to add more uh, add a bigger jar but as it was it seems fine so from those two joints of the little gammon I've gotten uh, basically 10 meals 10 meals 10 family meals and if you've got a hungry husband then I, I don't know I guess you've got um, probably two and a half meals per gammon but I like to stretch it out so for me anyway it is 10 so I've just got to wait for my canner to be free and then I can stick these in next like let's move on to the chicken okay I don't know if this worked out I did a whole thing on how to package these airtight and I don't think it went through but basically how to make something airtight is 
I put uh, my boned chicken, three a piece, and when I put it in, I made sure that these were completely covered, and I had one clean hand and one one that had the chicken. Put them in without touching anything round here. Then what you want to do is lay it down, get a good seal halfway, and you trust that seal, and then you want to roll it, and that gets the rest of the air out, double check it's closed, and then you have an airtight chicken bag with very little air in it. Um, so out of my two boxes of boneless chicken, I'll do this one again because I don't can bone. And also I spoke about um, sterilization. I keep all my bags and I use them all, but I am proud to say I've started to brew my own stuff. Um, and I understand that um, with everything in brewing needs to be sanitized. So you can buy these easy brewing sanitizer tablets or sanitizer powders. And I just use those because you only need a few tablespoons, two tablespoons per gallon uh, of water. Just double check that that is definitely closed, because sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, there you go. Comparatively, comparatively done uh, to vacuum sealing. It's it it'll do. And um, yeah, and reuse them and sanitize them instead. Right now we're on to the doing the chickens now um handy tip for you just in case you want a handy tip don't use black pepper if you choose to add it to your um canned chicken because it makes it look awful <laughs> it really does it makes it look like it's sitting in mud so all I'm going to do is two and a half chicken breasts in here and I'm adding a lemon this time round. Not to all of them, but uh, but definitely just a few of them. And I should be able, with my 750 milliliter jars, I should be able to fit two in there with a lemon slice one of my chicken breasts that have been rinsed and rinsed and rinsed and rinsed again stick that in there just gonna wash my hands um, and then some white pepper not a not too much just half a teaspoon and some salt Fill it up with water it will give off some liquid so I don't want to do too much but I do I'd rather do it slightly lower because they do tend to uh, produce their own liquid which is very nice and that is a good to go I've just got to work out which lid is it, is it that one? in the UK we reuse our um, jars by the way and I'll get on doing all of those <laughs> 